19. How to start living like a king almost overnight. The Bible says, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. John chapter 10 verse 10. Johann Goethe said, Life is a quarry, out of which we are to mold and chisel and complete a character. You are here to lead a full, joyous, successful and rich life along all lines. You are born to win, to conquer and to triumph over all obstacles. You are here to release your wonderful hidden talents, to bless mankind, and to express yourself at the highest possible level. Call upon infinite intelligence within you to reveal to you your true place in life and follow the lead which comes clearly and distinctly into your conscious, reasoning mind. When you find your true expression in life, you will be perfectly happy and health, wealth, and all the other blessings of life will follow. Your success and prosperity in the art of living a wonderful and glorious life depend on your habitual thinking and your heart's desire to transform your life from top to bottom. Remember, you go where your vision is, and your vision is that about which you are thinking, that where you are directing your attention, and the object where you are presently focused. Whatever you give attention to, your subconscious will magnify and multiply exceedingly in your life. How a woman discovered $45,000 she thought lost. While writing this chapter for the audiobook, I was interrupted by a long-distance telephone call from a woman in New York City, informing me that she had followed my advice and that her subconscious had revealed to her where the money was hidden. Some months ago, her husband, who gambled considerably, had passed on. Prior to his passing, he had informed her that he was placing his winnings, $45,000, on the races for that day, in his desk drawer where it would be safe. Following his demise, she unlocked the desk and looked through every drawer and examined all the papers and correspondence but to no avail. On the occasion of her first phone call, I suggested that she relax, let go completely, immobilize her attention, and just prior to sleep, to turn her request over to her subconscious mind as follows. Infinite intelligence in my subconscious knows exactly where the $45,000 is secreted, and it is revealed to me now. I give thanks for the answer now. On the third night following this technique, her husband appeared to her in a dream and showed her exactly where the secret drawer was located and how by pressing a certain button it would open. She awakened immediately and found that the instructions were absolutely correct. To her joy and satisfaction, there was the $45,000 in $20 bills neatly stacked away. The psychic appearance of her husband in the dream was simply a dramatization of her subconscious mind, knowing that she would immediately follow instructions given and not think it was just an idle dream. The riches of your subconscious are indeed infinite in its manner of expression. Hidden Riches Revealed by Meditation A young man came to see me some months ago and said, I'm a misfit. I'm a square peg in a round hole. I feel rejected and unwanted. I explained to him that the infinite storehouse of riches was in his subconscious mind and that he, like anybody else, could learn to tap it and bring forth all the wisdom, power and creative ideas he needed. Furthermore, I pointed out to him that each person is unique and that there is no misfit in a universe ruled by law and order, that no two people are alike any more than are two leaves of a tree or two crystals of snow. The infinite never repeats itself as infinite differentiation is the law of life and there is no such thing as an unwanted man or woman. Emerson said, I am an organ of God, and God hath need of me where I am, otherwise I would not be here. This simple explanation appealed to this young man, and he decided to apply the following simple prayer technique. Infinite intelligence reveals to me my hidden talents and shows me the way I should go. I know infinite intelligence is seeking expression through me, and I follow the lead which comes to me. I am a focal point of infinite life in the same way that an electric bulb is a focal point for the manifestation of electricity. Infinite life flows through me as harmony, health, peace, joy, growth and expansion along all lines. I give thanks for the answer which is mine now. 
After a few days, he felt a deep desire to take up public speaking and a course in applied salesmanship. Following a few months' training, he obtained a position as a representative for a manufacturer and has proven to be an excellent salesman and an asset to his organization. Accept wealth and happiness now. Now is the time. I've talked to many people who are continuously looking forward to better times. Many are saying that someday they will be happy, prosperous, and successful. Some are waiting for their children to grow up and get married. And then they say they would travel to Europe and Asia and see the many strange, faraway places. A small percentage of the people I meet and converse with are waiting for the old folks to die. Then they claim they would decide what to do. All these people were waiting for something to happen, instead of realizing that God is the eternal now. Their good is now, this moment, waiting for them to claim it. As you have heard demonstrated in this audiobook by now, you are in command now for a full, prosperous life. One man said that someday he would hit the jackpot and make his mark on the world. His wife said that she hoped someday she would get a healing of her skin rash. I explained to both of them that all the powers of God were within each one of them. Peace is now. You can claim God's river of peace flows through you now. The infinite healing presence is available, and you can claim that this healing presence is flowing through you now, making you whole, pure, and perfect. It dawned on the husband and wife that wealth and healing are available now. This man's wife began to affirm night and morning as follows, God's healing presence is saturating my whole being and divine love flows through my whole being. My skin is an envelope of God's love and is whole, pure, and perfect without spot or blemish. Within one week she proved to herself that the infinite healing was instantly available to her, and she had a complete healing. I explained to her husband that wealth is available now, that it is a thought image in the mind. He began to affirm boldly, God's wealth is now circulating in my life. I am engraving this idea in my subconscious mind, and I know that whatever I impress on my subconscious mind will come to pass. I realize as I continue to do this that the response from my subconscious mind will be compulsive and I will be compelled to express wealth. As he continued praying in this manner, new creative ideas welled up within him. He made very large investments in gold stocks, both foreign and domestic, and in a matter of months he had earned a small fortune. He had a preponderant feeling, a sort of persistent intuitive urge to buy these stocks, all of which soared greatly in value immediately. He proved to himself that wealth was available here and now. Claim your spiritual, mental, and material riches now. Strength is now. Call on the infinite power of God within you, and this power will respond, energizing, vitalizing, and renewing your whole being now. Love is now. Claim that God's love envelops and saturates your mind and body. Realize and know that divine love is being filtered through you and manifested in all phases of your life. Guidance is now. Infinite intelligence responds to your call. It knows only the answer and will reveal it to you now. Claim your good now. You do not create anything. All you do is to give form and expression to that which always was, now is, and ever shall be. Moses and Jesus could have used a loudspeaker, a radio, or a television. The idea or principle by which these are made always existed in the mind of the infinite. When Plato referred to the archetypes of divine mind, he referred to the fact that there is an idea or a pattern in divine mind behind every created thing in the universe. Plan for a rich future now. Remember that if you are planning something in the future, you are planning it now. If you are worried about the future, you are fearing it now. For example, if you are dwelling on the past, you are thinking of it now. You have control over your present thoughts. All you have to change are your present thoughts and keep them changed. You are aware of your present thoughts, and all that you can realize is the outer manifestation of your habitual thinking at the present moment. Beware of the two thieves stealing from you. The past and the future are the two arch-thieves. 
If you are indulging in remorse and self-criticism over the past mistakes and hurts, the mental agony you experience is the pain of your present thought. If you are fearful about the future, you are robbing and stealing from yourself joy, health, happiness and peace of mind. Begin to count your blessings now and get rid of the two thieves. To think of a happy and joyful episode in the past is a present joy. Remember, the results of past events, good or bad, are but the representation of your present thinking. Direct your present thoughts into the right channels. Enthrone in your mind peace, harmony, joy, love, prosperity, and goodwill. Dwell consciously and frequently on these concepts and claim them and forget all other things. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 Take this spiritual medicine regularly and systematically, and you will build a glorious future. The maid thinks big and gets what she wants. I am writing this chapter for the audiobook in Honolulu. I had a most interesting conversation with the Hawaiian maid who attends to my room in the Surf Rider Hotel on the beach. I gave her some books to read, and she told me that some months previously a guest at the hotel had given her Your Infinite Power to Be Rich, which she read avidly, applying the techniques for amassing riches outlined therein. She added that after perusing the book she began to think big, and she made out an affirmation for herself, I now possess and own a lovely car which is a divine idea in divine mind. I am driving it to and from my work every day. It is fully paid for, and I accept it now in my mind. The sequel to her frequent affirmation and her joyous expectancy of results was that she casually mentioned to one of the guests that she was praying for a car. This guest was a millionaire, and he casually said to her, You can have my car. I'm buying a new one today. His car was a Cadillac, two years old, and in excellent condition. She said, I got exactly what I prayed for. It was a complete gift with no strings attached, and now I am praying that infinite intelligence will attract to me a man who harmonizes with me perfectly. I know that will happen too. Undoubtedly she will get the answer she wants because she is thinking big, and also because she understands that before she calls, the answer is already known in her subconscious mind. How a Promotion and a wonderful increase in salary were obtained. A junior executive once told me that he was trying hard for a promotion, but he added, Others are ahead of me. I'll have to wait. I don't have priority, and so on. I told him frankly that he promoted himself. First, he would have to remove the barricade and stumbling blocks which were present in his own mind, such as his belief that he would have to wait perhaps for seven years. He decided to impregnate his subconscious mind with the idea of promotion, paying no attention to circumstances or conditions or the time element, and looking to no one for promotion but giving all his allegiance, loyalty, and devotion to the infinite intelligence within him. Accordingly, he affirmed slowly, quietly, and feelingly several times a day as follows, Promotion is mine now. Financial increase is mine now. Outstanding success is mine now. These ideas sink into my subconscious mind, and I know that my deeper mind will compel me to express them. In a few weeks' time, he suddenly realized his cherished goal with an increase in prestige and a wonderful increase in salary. How a Widow Discovered the Riches Hidden in Her Mind I recently interviewed a widow who said she had been praying four years for a husband, but that she had never met the right man. In talking with her, I discovered she had been constantly postponing her good by such statements as, I would like to marry when I retire, then I could travel to different parts of the world and be free to enjoy life with my husband, I never meet the right men, and so on. This widow had been projecting marriage in the future and was defeating her own purpose, she was unconsciously placing obstacles and delays in her own mind. I explained to her that she should always pray in the now, 
and showed her how to collapse time by realizing first of all that before we experience anything, we must first claim it in our mind. I further explained that she marries character or an ideal in her mind. Accordingly, she prayed frequently as follows. I am happily married now to a wonderful spiritual-minded man who harmonizes with me perfectly. There are mutual love, freedom and respect between us. I accept this man now, this moment in my mind, and I know that the deeper currents of my mind bring both of us together in divine order. She practiced this prayer every night for a week, entering into the feeling and the delight that would be hers if she were already married. At the end of that time one of the teachers in the school proposed to her, and I later had the privilege of performing the marriage ceremony. She proved to herself that you can realize the desire of your heart without procrastination. Her subconscious mind was the invisible matrimonial agent. How He Secured Riches and Promotion Recently a man visited me and during our conference elaborated on his many reverses. He concluded by blaming God for punishing him with bad luck, etc. I explained to him, however, that the universe is always one of law and order and that God, among other things, is a universal principle or law. If a man breaks a law, he will suffer accordingly. It is not a question of punishment by an angry God. On the contrary, it is an impersonal matter of cause and effect. If a man misuses the law of mind, for example, the reaction will be negative. But if he uses the law correctly, it will help, heal, and prosper him along all lines. I instructed him how to become a free-flowing channel for divine life and gave him the following prayer meditation process to use frequently. I am a clear, open channel of the divine and infinite life flows freely and joyously through me as health, peace, abundance, security and right action. I promote all my products in divine order and I am constantly releasing new creative ideas. I am constantly expanding spiritually, mentally and financially and am releasing the imprisoned splendor within. This man has received two promotions in the past six months and has told me that the corporation with which he is associated has offered him the office of Executive Vice President. He added joyfully, I stopped blocking my good. I have taken my foot off the hose in a manner of speaking, and the waters of life are flowing freely into my life. This man has learned to tap the riches of the infinite. Moreover, he has ceased pressing the weight of his negative mentality upon the pipeline of life. Shakespeare said, All things be ready if the mind be so. So may it be with you. Meditation for Miracle Power Steps to Richer Living and Financial Success It will pay you great dividends to use this meditation as often as possible. Wist ye not that I be about my father's business? I know that my business, profession, or activity is God's business. God's business is always basically successful. I am growing in wisdom and understanding every day. I know, believe and accept the fact that God's law of abundance is always working for me, through me, and all around me. My business or profession is full of right action and right expression. The ideas, money, merchandise and contacts that I need are mine now and at all times. All these things are irresistibly attracted to me by the law of universal attraction. God is the life of my business. I am divinely guided and inspired in all ways. Every day I am presented with wonderful opportunities to grow, expand, and progress. I am building up goodwill. I am a great success because I do business with others as I would have them do it with me. Chapter Points to Remember 1. You are here to lead the abundant life, a life full of love, peace, joy, and rich living. Begin now to release the riches of the treasure house within you. 2. You go where your vision is. Whatever you give attention to, your subconscious will magnify and multiply in your experience. 3. The intelligence in your subconscious knows the answer to all problems. A woman wanted to know where $45,000 was secreted in her house by her late husband. She turned the request over to her subconscious prior to sleep, and her deeper mind showed her exactly where the money was. 4. 
There is no such thing as an unwanted person in a universe ruled by law and order. Each person is unique and is born with different endowments. Claim that you are an organ of God and that God hath need of you where you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Realize that infinite intelligence is guiding you to your true expression and you will move onward and upward. 5. Accept your wealth, health, and success now. Stop procrastinating. God is the eternal now. This means your good is now. Claim peace now. Claim that God's love fills your soul now, this minute. Wealth is a thought image in your mind. Claim that God's wealth is circulating in your life now. As you make a habit of this, your subconscious will compel you to express wealth. 6. Claim all your good now. Remember, you do not really create anything. All you do is to give form and expression to that which always was, now is, and ever shall be. Moses and Jesus could have used radio, television, and all our modern communication methods. The idea or principle behind all discoveries always existed in the mind of the infinite. 7. Plan a rich and glorious future now. If you are planning something in the future, you are planning it now. If you are thinking about the past, you are thinking about it now. You can control the present moment. Change your present thought pattern to conform to health, wealth, and success, and your future is certain. Your future is your present thought pattern made manifest. 8. Beware of the two thieves. If you are indulging in remorse over past mistakes or are worrying about the future, you should be aware that these are the two thieves that rob you of vitality, discernment, and peace of mind. 9. Think big, and you will experience great things. A maid affirmed boldly, I now possess and own a lovely car, which is a divine idea, and I am driving it to and from my work. It is fully paid for, and I accept it now. She received a gift of a wonderful car. This is the way her subconscious responded. 10. Never say to yourself, I must wait years for promotion or an increase in salary. Never procrastinate, as that blocks your good. You pray in the now, always. Your subconscious takes you literally, and when you say, I'll have to wait, you are blocking your own good. Claim promotion and wealth now. 11. When you wish to marry, never say, I would like to marry when I retire. You are projecting marriage into the future and are defeating your own purpose. Claim, I am happily married now to a wonderful man who harmonizes with me perfectly, and your subconscious will respond accordingly. 12. God, or the life principle, never punishes. Man punishes himself by misuse of the law of his mind. Think good, and good follows. Think negatively, and negation follows. Use the following prayer frequently. I am a clear, open channel of the divine and infinite life which flows freely through me as harmony, health, peace, joy, abundance, and security. Remember, it is as easy for God to become all these things in your life as it is to become a blade of grass. Become open and receptive to your good, and you will discover that all things be ready if the mind be so. Shakespeare 13. Use the meditation at the end of the chapter as your faultless guide in taking the miracle power steps to richer living and financial success.